Hi folks, Double RPG is back by delivering to you my thoughts on the follow-up to the pilot episode in the second part of the story arc, Rise of the Turtles Part 2. I already mentioned how the story captivated me to keep watching the show, and Part 2 came in as no exception. Anyway, let's get started, shall we? Episode 2 starts off with the first episode ended, and the Turtles discover the canister of mutagen that transformed them into the anthropomorphic reptilian ninjas that they are now. As they inspect the canister, Mike insists that the agents were aliens and they interrogate the thug in the process. The thug reveals his name as Snake. No, not that snake. Or that snake. Or that. Or that! Well, anyway. Snake reveals he was only working for them, and begrudgingly agrees to take Leo and his brothers to the aliens' hideout where the girl and her father were abducted. Inspecting the perimeter of the base took far too long as Mikey forgot to keep an eye on Snake, so they tried to track him down. However, this turned out to be pointless as Leo and Raph agreed to take their brothers back to the sewer lair to prepare for the upcoming raid. Leo talks with Splinter to ask what it means to be a leader, and Splinter tells him that the only one who knows is the one who becomes it, as they have to learn from their wins and losses. Everything is set in stone, and the turtles race to the enemy's lair by taking the van that Snake was driving in. At the base, Snake is conversing himself with the androids where the aliens have referred to themselves as the Krang, and their speech is very shoddy for human terms. Snake gets irritated by it while the van races toward the outside wall to only leave itself as a setup for the turtles to get in quietly. During the crash, the canister of ooze that was in the van breaks open and Snake does not have a lucky day. The mutagen spreads onto him and he transforms into a monstrous figure in the shadows. The turtles break in and fight off against the Krang while looking for the girl and her father. They find them and the girl reveals herself to be April O'Neil, but this time as a teenager in this series. Very interesting. Don and Raph try to break them free, but were too late when more of the aliens opened up April's cell parallel from where the turtles were standing, and they take her and her father away. The chase only gets sidetracked when Snake gets in their way by showing himself to be a mutated plan of all things. Mike dubs Snake as Snakeweed because of the transformation in his name, and the battle begins with Leo instructing Donnie to save April and her father. Donatello rushes toward the chopper to save her, and April falls off from the hatch with Donnie coming to her rescue. However, her father ends up being unlucky as he's taken away regardless. On Leo's end, he, Raph, and Mike still duke it out with Snakeweed with some very insane tactics, as they manage to defeat him with some help from the Krang and their laser pistols? Yeah, and you know what? It actually worked! Our heroes escape and bring April to her aunt's apartment to live in, and she forms a friendship with the turtles in hopes they can save her father. Leo and his brothers arrive back to the sewer lair, and Splinter congratulates Leo on his first success. This, in turn, brought attention to the whole family as the news discover a shuriken with Hamato Yoshi's family symbol on it from the wreckage of the van that the turtles stopped from the episode before. Splinter tells his sons to be more careful, and Raph thinks it'll be okay after one little mistake. This may turn out to be very bad as someone else in Japan sees the newscast, and he recognizes the family symbol which persuades him to go to New York. The warlord with ninjas at his side reveals himself to be the leader of the foot ninja, the Shredder. With that, the episode ends. My opinions on this episode are just as high and great as the first part. Some of my favorite highlights were when Michelangelo started ridiculing his brothers for not believing him about the Krang when they witnessed their presence at the enemy base, but they shrug it off and tell Mike to give it a rest. Poor Mike can't even catch a break. Another funny moment is with the Krang speaking as they mostly speak with sentence fragments. I notice that whenever I type in Microsoft Word, and their speech is a reminder why I try to improve on my typing skills to begin with. It was very funny, and it should come in as a very funny moment for even those that have the same problem as I do sometimes. But anyway, the one thing I really liked about this episode is Leonardo's lesson about what it means to be a leader when he talks to Splinter about it at the beginning. Splinter tells more about his past, about how he and Oroku Saki were great friends, but the love for a woman named Tang Shin made Saki a cruel villain that led to the death of her and Yoshi's newborn infant, Miwa. It goes to tell that even though loss takes effect for everyone, they can gain better things down the road. Leo has always been my favorite character because of his weapon, but I hardly see him develop himself as a leader as he was usually there in all media iterations of the character. This show takes a step backwards and develops Leo from the ground up, and I really enjoyed that more than anything else. Overall, my thoughts on the second part were just as great as the pilot. It finishes up the story arc that introduces the story, it brings in some great character development that totally brings you into everyone, and it leaves a good impression that this show will be a spectacular ride for the season. More action takes place, and the story being set in stone has made me enjoy this episode far more than I did with the pilot. I have to give this episode a 10 out of 10 rating. 
With the one hour special finally complete in this two part review, I will say that Turtle Mania is back with a vengeance and will become a wild ride for old and new fans alike. If you haven't checked the episodes out by now, then now would be the perfect time to do so by going to nick.com and be sure to pick up the series whenever it hits DVD and Blu-ray. Believe me, your fears will be laid to rest when you see this one hour special. I guarantee you that. Anyway guys, tune in next time as I deliver my thoughts on the next episode, which is called Turtle Temper. This is Double RPG signing out, and I'll catch you next time. Cowabunga, Turtle fans!